changing of seasons, whatever it is, God is still in control and we love him and we care for him uh, in a special way because he does for us. So welcome to our services today. I'm Pastor Dale Fonto and uh, home base here is uh, New Life Church of God in Crown Meadow. Uh, today we continue on our series that we've been talking about beginnings. We're concerned about your journey. We're concerned about growing great people. And as you start every beginning in your life, as you're on your journey, we believe that there is an excellent way that you can move towards God's designed and destined end for your life. So come worship with us. Just don't be entertained. Just don't sit back and view, but worship with us today. We think it's a significant time, and uh, we think that our time together today is very beneficial. We welcome the presence of the Lord, His glory to be with us. Come on in the sanctuary this morning.
Father, we give you thanks and praise today. We gather in your name and we welcome you. We welcome you into our midst, into our gathering. Do something for us, unusual, God. Bless us and strengthen us. We recognize that, oh Lord, you are the audience today. We gather to worship you. So we check ourselves. We check the things that are of value to us. We check ourselves. We check the things that we worry about. We check the things that we're angry to you about, oh God. We check ourselves today, knowing that you are worthy of our praise. If that's what we say, then we want to live up to that. So you're welcome to reign and to rule and to bless and to touch and to strengthen and to heal and to anoint and to empower and to deliver. You are welcome to do all of that and much more. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I invite you to stand with me as you are able to this morning to read our opening text of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 7 through 11 this morning. Uh, that reminds us about just the power that we have available from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, uh, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Amen, amen. So we go through all kinds of struggles, but we are not defeated because Christ, is in our bodies. Let's show him and let's love him for who he is and what he provides for us. Sister Susan will come in to lead us in our opening songs. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. And oh, how I love Jesus. Amen. Let's worship the Lord.
of our schools, Lord God. We pray for them in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we pray that you would strengthen them and help them, oh God. We pray for those who engage with our students and in the classrooms, oh God. We pray, Lord God, for divine intervention. We pray, Lord God, that lessons would be presented, Lord God, in a way of, of, of excellence, oh God. Give teachers understanding and guidance, oh God. We pray for all of those in the school systems continually, yes. Lord God. Those who prepare the yes. facilities, oh God. Those who bring the children to schools, oh God. Those who provide meals. Those who provide other services unto our children, oh God. We pray for them in the name of Jesus, oh God. Expose whatever needs to be exposed, yes. oh God. That all hearts, all minds, and all spirits are tuned in to providing that service of oh, excellence yeah. into our children. And we pray for our children. Yeah. Children, many of them deal with so much, oh God. Oh, yeah. And we cry out on their behalf. We cry out, Lord God, that they may be loved and nurtured in their homes and cared for yes. in a very special way, oh God. Oh, yeah. We pray for them in the name of Jesus, yes. oh God.
And so, Father, we ask that your Holy right Spirit now. will comfort, Lord God, those of us who are grieving, yes. even in our community, Lord God. Yes. We grieve the life of Sinead Dorito, Lord yes. God. Yes. And yes. we pray for our children, yes. our yes. husband, our family, our yes. parents, oh God. Yes. Holy Spirit, be a comforter. Comfort as we could have never imagined you, oh Lord. Yes. And so we pray, Lord God, for all of the families, all of us who yes. are going through some stage of grief, oh God. Yes. Restore and strengthen us as we move forward, still with purpose, still with meaning, oh God. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord God, Thank for the you. hope that we have. The hope that we have beyond the grave, oh God. Yes. Thank you for the hope that we have of a brighter day. Yes. Brighter than any perfect day, yes. oh God. We hold on to you. Be an anchor unto us as we move through the world this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Texas scripture, scripture will be taken from Colossians chapter 3 this morning. <clears throat> be looking at the beginning portions of that, uh, that chapter. We're concerned about the journey. We know that we begin, but at the beginning of our journey, we want us to take note of some special instructions 
that the Apostle Paul has for us. So we're going to come back to you in just a moment uh, with our message of today. Sister Susan will come with our sermonic song for uh, today, our song before the sermon tomorrow. Because the writings many years ago penned that don't put off until tomorrow decisions to follow Jesus Christ as he made today. Tomorrow. <laughs>
decisions and our choices to follow you and to honor you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you for blessing us. Now speak to us, O oh Lord God, even as we are on our journey called life, O oh God. May we take on those skills. May we take on the power that you have for us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Directing our attention to the New Testament letter, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, I want to read for our hearing as we begin today with uh, verses 1 through 5. Uh, we'll look at uh, some of the preceding verses as we continue in our scriptural lesson. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden in Christ, uh, with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. We'll stop right there. We're going to look further into this third chapter. Even as we are on our journey, even at the beginning, and as we have mentioned, and as we have been through this particular month, as we celebrated uh, a new beginning of a new school year, but we've also challenged one another uh, to appreciate and uh, to maneuver through uh, whatever beginnings in our lives, we all have various beginnings as we have let that be made known and uh, we want to make a choice to honor the Lord in our beginnings, to know how to start off in our beginnings and know how to begin to imagine what the desired ending, what God's ending may be for us as we are in the midst of beginnings in our lives, beginning a new job, beginning a new month, beginning a new week, beginning a new episode where there has been transitions in your lives, beginnings, beginnings, beginning, uh, even dealing that maybe you may have had a sickness to come upon your body illegally and to know how to maneuver through that kind of beginning. So we try to press the imagination and try to press the impress the application of on your lives of beginnings and how to maneuver through those beginnings. Last week we looked at a case study when we looked at the children of Israel as they were in their beginnings of freedom, as they had been free from uh, captivity into, in Egypt. And uh, we saw how disobedience crept in to their lives and crept into uh, to their beginnings. And they struggled as God tested them even through their beginnings. And so even on today, we want to look continually at the journey of our beginnings. And please hear me when I, uh, I really say that I am most interested in seeing the development of great Christians, of great people, more so than developing a name of a local church, a local church building. We want to see the development of great people, of great servants of God in your life. That becomes the bottom line. And so as we move through with such an understanding, even through the beginnings of our lives, beginnings of seasons in our lives, we want to be able to live consistently as the people of God. We want to live our lives in such a way that our journey through whatever beginning in our lives, it could be a new struggle of our lives. Whatever the journey is, we want that to be consistent with being the people of God. As we move through journeys, as we move through disappointments, as we move through loss, as we move through increase, whatever it may be, we want the journey to produce great people of God. So as we look through our journeys, we understand what the focus uh, can all can be all about in that third chapter of uh, of Colossians. Uh, that the, the passage ends in verse number eleven when it says, "Christ is all in all." Christ is all in all. 
and measurement of it. And so whatever journeys you and I may go through, whatever beginnings that, it, that may be there, may that journey be filled with Christ being all in all. That means Christ is everything. Our lives are lived for Christ. And so, even as we look at our text of scripture and encouraging us to look through our journeys, uh, those first couple of verse, verses kind of sets, uh, sets the, 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 the phrase and sets the atmosphere for what's going on. You know, we've been raised with Christ. We have been uh, lifted up with him. And let me just say right now, whatever beginning you may find yourselves on and journeying in life, may Christ be everything for you. Amen. May Christ, may your life be anchored in Christ. Amen. That's the only way that we can get through some of the journeys of our lives is that we will find ourselves being anchored in Christ Amen. Jesus. Life hits us with some storms. Life hits us with some disappointments. Oh, yes. And we don't have to wait until those storms come to receive Christ into our lives. For well, many times, if you wait that long, then the, 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 the storms will become that much greater. And so we're mindful that uh, we need to have Christ in our lives. And whatever beginnings that we, can, that we are challenged with, that journey will mean that we're anchored in Christ as we go through the journey. So verse 5 says, put to death, put to death, mortify whatever uh, that may be, that we may be carrying ourselves. Put it to death. Treat it as being dead. Verse 5 says, whatever belongs to our earthly, uh, our earthly lives, this fleshly lives, as we journey through whatever beginning, as you journey through a school year, as you journey through an assignment on your job, put to death everything else that is there. The journey is giving them to us, and we want to understand some things that are there at the beginning and as we proceed through the journey. This journey has taken us four weeks into it as we celebrated that first Sunday, uh, the students, and uh, the second Sunday, we began the series of teachings. And, and so a couple of things I want to share with you as you are on your way, as you are on your way through whatever journey in life it may have been. We've celebrated the beginning. We've celebrated new beginnings in our lives and to appreciate them all the more. And so as we are in our beginnings and we journey through that, I want to tell us and to encourage us that even at the beginning, the first thing I guess I can say to you today, at every beginning, stop. Yeah. At every beginning, stop. Oh, you want to say pause. At every beginning in your life, those of us who are encouraged in our growth, in our pilgrimage, in our relationship with God, at every beginning, oh, stop, realize. That's where verse 5 comes into place. Uh, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to our earthly nature. Mentioning some things there, sexual immorality, impurity, lust evil desires and greed. All of this is idol worship. Put to death. Stop. Realize that as we begin a new journey, we want to do so with our spirit man being strengthened. That we can realize what's going on. Realize what our earthly journey, what this flesh can do to get in the way. <coughs> to get in the way. To, to begin to hesitate some things in our lives. Realize the life that we've been living. Come to terms with all the stuff that we have dealt with in our life. And some of it may be out of control. Come to terms with it. At the beginning, as you begin that journey, come to terms. Identify those areas in your lives that are just that they're out of shape. That they're just out of control, if you will. Christ has offered us more than just a fire insurance policy. Just more than just a ticket to heaven. He's offered us a way to deal with our earthly nature, with those habits, with those character traits, with that stuff that's out of control. And so on the journey, as we're desiring to live as a people of God, the scripture says we can put to death 
those things of the earthly nature that may mess with us on this journey, that may disqualify us for some things on this journey. So at the beginning, we pause and we want to put this flesh into check and to allow our renewed, reborn, revived lives to live and to have its way. And so we're pausing. We're going to stop justifying some things in our lives. That's just the way I am. My mama was like that. My daddy was like that. And I'm going to be rude. I'm going to be crude. I'm going to be ugly because that's just me. Stop on your journey. Because that beginning is going to take another beginning, another beginning, and you're never going to get it right. And you're never going to get to where you need to get. And God is trying to get you to in life. Yes. And our beginnings, we, we pause. We, we begin to, to realize that there is, there is a greater power that we can have access to. And some things that we need to put into check as we journey past our beginnings. The second thing that I want to share with you is something that we began to uh, delve into on Wednesday night in our time. Is we challenge one another to begin to look. Look at ourselves. Look at our personalities having a self-discovery of our lives, the things that we that, that have grown on us and grown into us. And we want to look at our earthly nature, if you will. Uh, and so we recognize there is a way of living uh, that, is, that, that is more in line with the life of Christ. There's a way that we can go through our journey being more and more like Christ. Our lives can now be lived restrained and not out of control. So as we're on the journey, as we have a new beginning, be it a fresh beginning or being a beginning that we've heard terrible news on, the journey past that beginning can now be lived with a life of restraint. A life of restraint. A life that's not out of control. Some people have never heard or never been exposed to a life of restraint. A life of restraint. Counselors tell us that children do better as they have been uh, giving, uh, been raised in a sense they don't have everything that they want. Yes. But a straight yes. instant gratification yes. is not theirs. And some counselors tell us that children do better as adults when as a child they have not been given everything yes. that they want. Amen. When they learn that there is some restraint yes. that is given to them. You can't have it just because you cut a, cut a fit in Walmart. Right. Just because I don't want to be shamed. I'm going to give you everything oh, that you right. want. Right. Again, counselors tell us that children do better as adults when they've been exposed to a life of restraint. Not getting everything that you had, that you wanted to have. And some of you right now can understand that this is why you've done so well as adults. Because growing up, your parents didn't have it anyway, so what I do is just put it off and just put it off and put it off and put it off. And so, you become a healthier adult. Yeah, right. yeah. so you, you cannot have instant gratification. You cannot have everything you want when oh, you yeah. want it. Yeah. There is a benefit in life when children are raised with that understanding. But again, there are those who have never been exposed to a life of restraint. Through years, I've spoken to young men who, who've never been shown a life of restraint. Their dad didn't show them restraint if their dad was around. Dad didn't teach them. There was no modeling of restraint, how to control your desires and not to live recklessly. They never heard, they've been exposed to that restraint. Oh, do what you want to do. If it feels like it, you just go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. No matter what they say, go ahead and sneak it. Never been exposed to a life of restraint. So therefore, uh, how to restrain some of those, uh, those human desires, some of those desires that we read about in verse 5 in our, in our text of Scripture. So therefore, no restraint that's given unto them. And so we're saying that even as we are on our journey, 
a life of restraint does us well. Yes. It does us well. Not being out of control. Not living foolishly, if you will. Foolishness does not have to grow up and to become adult foolishness. Even as scripture talks about the foolishness is bound up in a child. That foolishness does not have to be lived out as an adult. So we can recognize that. The writer of the Proverbs lets us know that there is a way that seems right unto a man. But in the end, it leads to death. Okay? So when we can recognize that, that even Christ gives us the power that we can live in restraint, that we can choose the best rather than just accepting the good. And so that means that there is a time of life of restraint that we can take on in our lives. And we can celebrate that and to recognize what God is doing. That self-discovery about our lives, about our personalities, about what the Lord has in store for us. As we can deal with our life's experiences, our life's journey. Why is it that we... Why is it that we carry ourselves in such a way? Why is it that we've always been impatient? Why is it that we've always been quick to go off of the handle? Why is it that our personalities go like that? All right. We get to do a self discovery Why is it that I get so impatient with X, Y, and Z? Why is it that I get so impatient with children or so impatient with my co-workers or so in Why is it? Do self-discovery check some restraints in our lives that we can understand why is it that I react like that? Why is it that I get snapping at certain times? Why is it that I expect everybody to do exactly like I do and if everybody can't do like me then they're no good? Why is it? What's in our personality? What's in our life's journey that will help us to even understand that we can do some more restraining in our lives? We can do some more self-discovery in our lives. Again, it's all about Christ being all in all. Yes. Christ being everything in our lives and oh, yes. through our lives. And we can even have a greater appreciation for one another. Yes. Greater appreciation for yes. one another. Yeah, so-and-so went off the handle over you. Yes. But you begin to, as you putting whatever needs to be put in the check, to even have a greater understanding, yes. a greater conversation, a greater insight, a greater <coughs> ministry opportunity to lives that are in need of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lives who are in need of a fresh awakening. Lives are in, that are in need of a better way to live their lives. And there you are as a servant of the Lord can help someone else because you've done the necessary self-discoveries in your life. That you can help somebody else on their journey. What's behind that co-worker who went off on somebody at the job? What is it? What was behind that? What's behind it? See, there are ministry opportunities that are there. Ministry opportunities that are there. That's why it becomes so beautiful that we don't have to live just so legalistically. Oh, somebody did wrong. Somebody did. Step back and say, what's behind it? That there's a ministry opportunity. Yes. We can be so legalistic and boom, 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 X, Y, Z. Or we can say, okay, what's behind that? There's a soul that's there. Yeah. There's a life that can yes. be exposed to Jesus Christ, be exposed to his righteousness. There's a broader way that we can even view life, broader way we can go on this journey. And if I can be a blessing to somebody else on yes. this journey, uh, we just look for us being a ball. I want my blessing. I want my blessing. But let me check us right there. A lot of times, and, and, and even the, the world system sees Christians, oh, all y'all want to do is to be blessed. Listen, I, I was reading a, an article this past week in a, in a Christian blog, and it says that, you know, I think about 64% of Christians believe that God wants to bless them, that God wants to prosper them. And listen, I have nothing wrong with that, but for the believer, being blessed is not the end. Because what does God say unto, unto Abraham? I'm going to bless you so much. So you can be blessed. Yeah. All right. So you can be blessed. And, and go ahead and 
jump and shout and God and bless you, whatever he's blessed you with, but that's not the end. All right. That's not the end. Right. 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 That's not the end. You are blessed. Yeah. Yeah.
chains now. Make sure if you're going through this tunnel of life, this tunnel of this journey, in a way that will glorify God. Because he brought you to these beginnings. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's brought you to them. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're about to face, he's bringing you to that. Yes. Check yourselves. Live that righteousness that he gives unto us. And as you check yourself, go ahead and live. Go ahead and journey. And know that God has you, that he will strengthen you, that nothing catches him off guard. We can't Amen. afford to live as the children of Israel in disobedience. And that's how we really end up on the journey, sidetracked, not getting to where God would have us to be. Right. My prayer is that as you begin the journey of a new week, that Christ will be your all in all, that Christ yes. will be yes. your yes. everything. Yes. Thanks to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's stand yes. together as we pray to Abel, and we're going to just be that encouragement unto you on the journey. It's your own. The beginning. Right. Fear not. Fear not. The Lord is with you. Yes, He is. The Lord is with you. Don't be dismayed. Yes. Yes. But be committed. Let Christ be all in all to you. Yes. Let Him be everything yes. for you. Yes. Don't be just half confident yes. for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Give it all to you. Give it all. Even as you see there's some work that needs to be done in your life, don't worry. There's work to be done in all of our lives. There's work to be done in our lives. Yes. But we we'll open ourselves to the Lord for more. I pray that you will go through this journey in a way that you'll bring glory to God and you'll be a blessing unto somebody else. Yes. You thought this journey was all about you and you questioned, why do I have to go on this journey? God may have you on this journey to be a blessing. To somebody else. Amen. To somebody else. Right. And God be your strength. Yeah. In this difficult. Yeah. Let him be your strength. Let him sustain you. That's right. And maybe God has you where you are right now. Yes. To be a blessing to somebody right. else. Yeah. Yeah. Recognize that we God has designed for us on this earth to be interdependent. That means we depend upon one another. We're in this together. Friends, be blessed, be strengthened. I need you to survive. You need me to survive. Amen. Right. And so with that, with that prayer, with that encouragement, we can press on to whatever yes. the journey is. Whatever the beginning is, God has brought you to this place. Yes. Be strong and on good courage. Yes. Amen. To press you. Again, a long life away. When you see you can be an encouragement and a blessing to somebody else, wave them and encourage them. Keep on, keep on, don't give up. Keep on pressing. When they see that you on your hands and knees struggling about that time, be an encouragement to somebody else. Keep on, keep it on. Run this race for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for life's journey. So many things we can complain about, so many things that we can question, so many things, Lord God, that we just don't understand. So as we are on this journey through our beginnings, oh God, we're going to trust you. Always giving measure to stop and to look at ourselves. Life is so complex and complicated and messed up and mixed up, oh God. We can't afford to live by this flesh. We can't afford to live by what we feel like doing, Lord God. Teach us the discipline of self-control, of restraint. So many times we compromise what you really have for us by just not being in control of that little thing and thought that little thing would bring us so much joy and peace and happiness and completeness and this is just what I want. There was even something greater down the line for us. Teach us, Lord God, to wait on you, Lord God. Teach us, O oh God, to depend upon your strength and your power for our lives. Through every beginning of our lives. Through every beginning. Even on the calendar. Father, we can even anticipate beginnings, look for beginnings, look beginnings. New opportunities that are there, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. May we be aware of the crowd around us, O oh God. Their influence is real. May we not be caught up in the crowd's influence. 
may we be able to hear your clear voice speaking unto us, O oh God. And even as a fellowship of encouragers, may we encourage one another on our journey this week. That we can be encouraged on this new journey of a new week, O oh God. We can be a blessing to someone else as we trust you and honor you and we count all of that other stuff in our flesh as being dead to live for Christ and allow you to be everything in our lives. Yes. Hear our prayer today, O God. We will honor you on this life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seen in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 As we join in together in the fellowship, and we want to be about producing great people, great people who live for the Lord Jesus Christ, even as we move forward in a, in a brand new week, we recognize the importance of, of our fellowship, of our being part of our fellowship, and uh, we're mindful of uh, the continual support. Thank you for your tithes and your offerings that you either give in line or you in our offering receptacles that's there in the, the back. Uh, we want to um, encourage you that as God blesses you, this is one way that he can use that you can bless somebody else, even as the offerings kind of uh, go even unto that. God has called us to be a conduit, to be a channel for the flow of blessings to go forward. Just want to read a word of prayer, even as uh, we understand that uh, it's in our giving that we are received. I just want to pray for just debt cancellation for somebody today. Some debt, some outstanding debt that is his, and it can be canceled. And uh, just to pray that even as you have given, even as you give, there will be debt cancellation. There will be a surprise that, uh, that you will see as you open whatever mail it is. There will be something that you can say, That's God. That's God canceling something uh, in my life. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the cheerful giver. I thank you that you are blessing them and helping them. Thank you, Lord God, for their heart that's after you. Now, Father, even as they give, I pray that there may be a debt release, that there may be a releasing of debt at some level in their lives, Lord God, even as they understand that they live to go and to bless others, oh God, even as uh, we begin to embark upon a brand new month, oh God, I pray that the resources that you are providing for your people will be sufficient, more than enough, Lord God, as they press through this coming month, oh God, and I thank you hearts are after you, and uh, you are releasing debt, you are opening opportunities, providing resources that we could have never imagined. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. 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 All right, as we uh, prepare to move on, I just want to be remind, reminding you, next Sunday is the first Sunday of September, September the 3rd, and even as we talked about in June, we said, well, look, let's do a restart. You said, let's do a restart of Sunday school. So next Sunday, 9 a.m., uh, will be the restart of the adult Sunday school class. Again, our children have already started their, uh, their lessons. But next Sunday, 9 from 9 o'clock to 9.15, uh, there are Sunday school uh, manuals, booklets that are there that are on the table. Uh, if you're going to be a part of the Sunday school class, we encourage you to. Uh, to, to do so uh, with that. So next Sunday, starting in the fall, uh, uh, so adult Sunday school will uh, pick up uh, again with more rich stuff. So we encourage you to be a part of, uh, of that in preparation for our Sunday services at 10 a.m. Uh, so we can work that show. Wednesday night, again, our Zoom continues. Again, our children's church, we have opportunities to reach out to our children and uh, to love on them, to instruct them, and uh, that becomes a blessing for them uh, indeed. Amen. Amen. Any opportunity, other opportunities that we need to highlight? Again, a brand new month. 
coming up, and uh, we're going to just maximize every opportunity that the Lord gives us to us. All right, all right. Well, let's stand, and uh, we're going to ready ourselves for our benediction. Uh, uh, again, the Lord has blessed us. He's helping us. We begin to check out that the Lord brought us through. Just want us to know and we'll have to see that we were one minute short this morning, but we made we wasn't bad to be one and a half hour. There's 127 degrees outside. The Lord has the Lord has. So just I didn't want to tell y'all that until the end. Well you cool us off. So as we go through this week, uh, again it's just all our hearts in our local community. One of my daughters, Shanada, the Lord called her home, and uh, so many of you have reached out to the family already. Uh, Warren and Judy, uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna love on them uh, again. One daughter just started college. Another daughter's there in North Central. We gonna love on them. We gonna oh, adopt yeah. them and uh, love on them and uh, just continue to, to to see God's face. Some things that happen on this side of eternity, we will never understand until we go see God's face. Yes. But in the meantime, we're going to be faithful to God. Be a blessing unto somebody else. Uh, even as you go through this week, may the Spirit of God uh, quicken your spirit just to help uh, somebody else along life's journey. Just have a blessed week. We got a great cool front coming through. Huh? Hi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 40 degrees. <laughs> God is up to something. And we want to be obedient unto Him. Whatever He's doing, whatever He's saying, we want to be on His side. Moving through life's journey. I talked to a friend last week. I was telling somebody in Southern California. They dealing with a hurricane and we're dealing with wildfire. <laughs> That's not backwards and upside down. No. I tell you, I tell you, God is up to something. We're going to be anchored in Him on this yes, journey. Yes. Anchored in yes. 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 Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name today, Lord God. Thank you for our coming together today. Thank you for the hope that, that resides within our hearts, within our spirits, oh God. Thank you for those that are gathered in this place today. Even there are those who are online, oh God. May this coming week prove to be fruitful. Uh, every day is not promised to us. May we live each day as a blessing unto you, as a service unto you, and making this world a better place in something that we do and something that we say unto somebody else, oh God. Go before us, go with us, protect us. May your angels be encamped around about us as we move through this week. We leave, Lord God, with your hope and your joy within our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.